That's actually quite a good move. If the words that are coming out of your mouth do not match the look on your face, you are unlikely to be effective. Okay, have you ever been in a negotiation that didn't feel much like a negotiation because you were being blackmailed or under threat? If so, today I'm gonna do a breakdown of a classic scene from Michael Clayton where that happens. Now, as we look at this, Tilda Swinton, for those of you who've seen the movie, plays a character who is actually the villain here in the movie. But for our purposes, I'm gonna break it down to offer her some advice on how she could have dealt with some of the hard bargaining moves that George Clooney makes more effectively. How'd it go in there? Pretty freaky, huh? You see Arthur? He's wandering around here somewhere. I'm kidding. Lighten up. You got one of these? It's a great memo. It's an oldie but a goodie. I got your heart racing, don't I? I don't know what the hell it is you think you're doing. What do you think I'm doing? The suit's over. We have a deal. Whatever that is, it's uh, meaningless at this point. You think? I must have gotten it wrong. I thought you had a tentative proposal. Okay, tip number one. If the words that are coming out of your mouth do not match the look on your face, you are unlikely to be effective. Everything that Tilda Swinton's face is showing here is fear, anxiety, and dread. So being dismissive and defensive, even a unskilled negotiator is gonna see like, yeah, right. Like, I'm afraid of you. Not working here, my friend. I didn't realize you'd signed all those checks. It's a drag. I got a thousand of these things. What the hell am I going to do with them? I'm calling Marty. Good. Good. Do it. That's a great place to start. Let's find out who told him that Arthur was calling Anna Kaiserson. Let's find out who tapped those phones. This, this memorandum, even if it's authentic, which I doubt, I highly... Doubt. I know what you did to Arthur. It's protected. It belongs to you, North. I know you killed him. It's a cut and dry case of attorney-client See, privilege. now that's just not the way to go here, Karen. For such a Definitely not the way to go. So, you know, often when um, we feel threatened, when someone is using difficult tactics, our tendency, our go-to is we're feeling pushed in that moment, so we push back. And that's what we see Tilda's character doing here, right? She's pushing back. She's saying, this is irrelevant. I don't know what you're talking about. When you are faced with difficult tactics, pushing back is typically not the way to go. So what is a better move, right? Because it's not just a cave in. But this is where doing some reframing of what, in this case, Clooney is saying might be helpful. It sounds like you have some more evidence. It sounds like there's some new information that's to bear here. Say a little bit more about that. Now, for those of you who know the film, like maybe that feels a little silly here. It certainly wouldn't make for good theater, but it does make for much more effective negotiation because you're showing that you are not afraid and you're not caving in and you're making them actually share more. For such a smart person, you really are lost, aren't you? This conversation is over. I'm not the guy that you kill. I'm the guy that you buy. Are you so blind you don't even see what I am? I'm the easiest part of your whole problem and you're gonna kill me? Don't you know who I am? I'm a fixer. I'm a bag man. I do everything from shoplifting housewives to bent congressmen and you're gonna kill me? What do you need? Karen, lay it on me. You want a carry permit? You want a heads up on an insider trading subpoena? I sold out Arthur for 80 grand and a three-year contract, and you're gonna kill me? What do you want? What do I want? Mm. I want more. I want out. And with this, I want everything. Is there a number? 10 is a number. Okay, a rare worked well for Tilda Swinton here, and also a do differently. What is the worked well? Well, that question, what do you want? You know, in negotiation parlance, we call that taking a difficult tactic. Because what Clooney is doing here, right, is just a rant, right, going on about he's a fixer and all the things he's done. And, and she just says, what do you want? And, and that is actually quite skillful. But then it ends, at least in this moment, 
with a big do differently. She translates it into a number. And this is a common mistake that negotiators make, is that they take a whole bunch of interests. And in fact, Clooney here gives some interests, right? But they translate it into a dollar amount only, which is a major negotiation mistake. There are all sorts of ways of negotiating an out, and it's not just money. 10? 10 what? 10 million? Where do you think, where do you think I'm gonna get 10 million dollars? You know what's great about this? Did you read it all the way to the end? You see who signed it? Let's go into that ballroom and ask Don Jeffries if he wants to pass the hat for a worthy cause. This would have to be a longer conversation mm -hmm. and, it, and would have to take place somewhere else. Where, my car? All right, I'm gonna make it easy. Let's make it five. Five and I'll forget about Arthur. Five. So, so interesting here, right? This kind of move that Tilda Swinton makes, probably, right, we would actually call a skillful move. So when she's not succeeding on the merits of the negotiation, she goes meta on the negotiation. And when I say meta, M-E-T-A, she tries to renegotiate the way the negotiation is happening. She says, this needs to happen somewhere else and with more time. And that's actually quite a good move. If you are reframing of difficult tactics to a conversation about legitimate interests, to a conversation about emotions, to what might be legitimate criteria aren't working, then the next thing you do is to renegotiate the way you are having the negotiation. And so that actually is a nice move that she makes here. But of course, Clooney's character, right? Michael Clayton here, he's no dummy. He doesn't want to do that. And so he ignores that and brings it right back to this haggling bargain. And the way he does it is by making what seems to be a big concession, right? Cutting the price off by 50%. But even that is a bit of a trick, as we'll see. Five is easier. Yeah, five is something we, we could talk. But notice it worked because she's back in the negotiation, which is exactly what she shouldn't do. What she should do is say, I'm not prepared to talk numbers unless we can change the terms under which we're having this negotiation. So many times when I'm coaching clients, they'll make this good move, which is to renegotiate the terms or process by which we're having the negotiation. And then the other side sucks them back in to a game that they cannot win. And that's exactly what Clooney has done here so successfully. Good. And then the other five is to forget about the 468 people that you knocked off with your weed killer. Let me finish up this meeting. I'll talk to Do Don. I look like I'm negotiating? Karen? One second. Everything okay? Yes. $10 million. Brilliant. How many times does time pressure result in a concession here. And it's a double whammy, right? Because Clooney says, do I look like I'm negotiating here? I mean, obvious answer is, yeah, you are negotiating, right? But what he's doing is trying to press on time. This is an offer that's gonna explode. And then, of course, the head of the board, who is in a meeting, who wants her back, says you need to come in here. Time pressure is a difficult tactic that people often use to extract concessions. And so, of course, the move here is to say, again, I can't make all these decisions in this moment. I need more, some time, more time. When can we meet again? But of course, she simply concedes. Bank of my choosing offshore immediately. Yes. Say it. $10 million, your account, the moment this meeting is Karen. Started. Everyone's waiting. I'm coming, Don. You have a deal. You're so f What? You're f What do you mean? Take a wild guess. Is there a problem? I don't understand. Here, let me get a picture while I'm at it. You don't want the money? No, you keep the money. You're going to need it. Is this fellow bothering you? I know. Am I bothering you? Karen, I've got a whole board waiting in there. What the, what the, what the hell's going on? Who are you? I'm Shiva, the god of death. Ron. Ronnie, I need security out here immediately. All right, here we go. That guy right there, stop him. Grab that guy. Okay, and a final mistake from Tilda Swinton, which is making commitment, 
without knowing what she's getting in return. And of course, what she's getting here, it looks like, is a lot of jail time. So, good negotiators in the face of blackmail tactics and difficult negotiation behaviors take a step back and they try to reframe those difficult tactics into conversations about interests or possible options or criteria. They actively listen. They don't play the game back. They don't run for the hills. And when that doesn't work, what they do is try to renegotiate the terms or process under which the negotiation is happening. So to sum up here, right, if I need to grade Tilda Swinton as a negotiator in this clip, she's getting 25 out of 100. And to be clear, what I mean by 25 to 100 is 25 to 100 to maybe life in prison. If you wanna hear more advice on how to deal with a really hard negotiation situation where there's lots of difficult tactics, watch this next video on Brittany Griner in Russia. Okay, you know you wanna keep watching. Click, 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 click.